Point number 11, if you want to preach, this is the last one, if you want to preach so as to convert, no. Just preach the promises of salvation, but not the conditions of salvation. Come on. You'll hear preachers say, uh, God knows the plans that He has for you. Plans to prosper you. Well, and, and, and that was what God said to Jeremiah. What did Jeremiah go and tell Israel? Was it to keep sinning? Stay in your rebellion? It's okay. There's peace for you. God knows the plans He has for you. It was to repent. Turn to God. He preached the conditions. Well, people today, I mean, these cliches within Christianity are about as unbiblical as you can get. God accepts you as you are. I was, I was preaching in Montana, walking around a, a, a state fair with a sandwich board on. And it said, stop sinning, trust Jesus. And then on the back it had a list of, from 1 Corinthians 6, 9 of all the sinners that will not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, as I'm walking around, of course, a lot of sinners are, are, are getting startled and, and it's grabbing their attention. It's pretty shocking. Now, I wasn't like Jeremiah walking around with a yoke or like uh, you know Isaiah was barefoot and naked and Ezekiel was on his side. I just had a, 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 a pretty uh, normal sandwich board <laughs> compared to what those guys are. But uh, they were coming up and I was grabbing their attention. And, and of course, some of the Christians were, were saying the same old, same old, you're making us look bad. And I'm thinking, good, you guys are hypocrites. You ought to look bad. bad. And uh, they're saying, uh, you know, you, you're giving us a bad name. But they're out there drinking their beer and sinning every day. I said, no, you're giving us a bad name. Of course, the Bible says you name the name of Christ and you depart from iniquity. Right. What makes Christians look bad are these Christians that are just sitting every day on uh -huh. campus, fornicating and drinking and walking around immodestly. There you go. They're making Christ look bad. Yes. But they said, uh, of course, I said you need to repent of your sins, put your faith in Christ. You need to stop sinning. Stop your rebellion. The Bible says sin no more. The Bible says cease to do evil. The Bible says, awake unto righteousness and sin not. Because God's against your sin. And they said, no, well, God accepts me as I am. I wonder where they got that from. I wonder who they heard that from. I said, no, He doesn't. The Bible says you need to be born again. Yeah. God does not accept you as you are. Unless you're born again, you'll not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. So they pulled out their next cliché. They don't have scriptures, so these, these Christian clichés. Just the, like a paper sword, you know, and they think they're actually going to conquer. You know, well, we got the sharp word of God. Well, they said, uh, they said, well, God, accept, God forgives me no matter what. I said, no, He doesn't. Unless you repent, you'll perish. Yes. But that's what the, 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 the church is giving people today. These, yep. these paper swords, these cliches that are anti-Bible. Yes, sir. That are leaving people secure and comfortable in their sin. Yes. And so if you want to preach, so ask to convert no one. Just preach the promises of salvation, but don't preach the conditions of salvation. Don't tell them they need to repent. Don't tell them they need to believe. Don't tell them they need to forsake everything to follow Christ and they need to give their whole being to God. Don't tell them that. And you'll be sure to leave them in their sin and they'll be sure to go to hell if they believe you. So in, in conclusion, if you want to preach so as to actually win souls, if you want to preach so as to actually see people come to Christ, you're, you're not to be a hireling and just a, a selfish servant trying to get all that you can from God, trying to get all that you can from this world, trying to make as much money as you can and be as popular as you can and be as liked as you can, have as many friends as you can. If you want to win souls, you need to serve God supremely Amen. for His glory and His honor. And your motivation ought to be love for God and love for your neighbor. And if you love people, if you love God, you'll do what God says. You'll give people what they need and not what they merely want. If you truly love people, you know 
the, the problem with much of evangelism today is that what people think is, is love is simply hatred and selfishness. And what people think is hatred is, is really the love of God. When a Christian comes to a sinner and says, it's okay, God understands, God accepts you as you are, He's not concerned about that sinner. He's just trying to be a friend of the world. And the world will say, this is the love of God. That's the hatred of the devil. But when you stand up on, on, on a ladder with a bullhorn and say you're not right with God, you're an enemy of God, God's going to devour His adversaries, God's going to slay His enemies in half, be He reconciled unto God! They say this is hatred. When in fact you might be the only person that they've ever met that actually loves their soul. So in conclusion, we must ourselves choose to serve Jesus Christ and not this world. To serve our fellow man, be willing to take the lowliest spot and wash their feet. And that might be wearing a sandwich board and taking some spit in the face at Mardi Gras. Taking the lowliest, humblest position which in, in the world today is the street preacher. We want to win souls. That is what we must do. To be encouraged and continue strong. Many preachers will start in the ministry and, and they'll, they'll give up. Because they want to be a friend of the world. They don't want to uh, bring the wrath of the church. But let's not bring the wrath of God upon our world through our neg negligence. Thank you for letting me speak. Yeah.